Hello everyone, I'm Nick Harrison with Rocky River Woodworks and today I'm going to be transforming this left side um, outfeed bench area of my miter saw station. Right now it's just a table um, with some storage underneath. I'm actually going to make it into a full bench to match the right side and have drawers underneath. So that's what we're doing today. All the tools that I'll be using in this video will be linked down in the description. So let's get started. So the first thing I do is to get some measurements of the left side table that is currently in position for my miter saw station. And then I use three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood at the table saw to begin ripping it down to make the cabinet carcass. To cross cut the plywood, I use this 48 inch T-square, mark my dimensions, and then use a cordless circular saw to cross cut the plywood to my desired length. I do this multiple times as I will need multiple pieces to make my cabinet carcass. Here I am marking out where my toe kick will be. It's a three inch by three inch notch in the bottom corners. To cut the notch for my toe kick, I use a cordless jigsaw. Next, I make some more notches on different areas of the carcass, including the back and top. These will be three quarters of an inch wide and three inches long. This will allow a runner piece of plywood to be attached to each piece of the carcass, including the center divider. This will keep my overall cabinet carcass from racking side to side. I again notch out these pieces using my cordless jigsaw. I rip down some more 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood to be 3 inches wide. This will be installed and used as that runner piece that I was talking about. I cut the piece to length at my miter saw. And now myself and my dog Ranger work on assembling the cabinet carcass. It was a little difficult to get the first few pieces installed as they wanted to keep moving on me, but with the help of Ranger, we were able to get it done. I then marked some dimensions and locations of where the center divider of my carcass will go. I then install said center divider. This will allow for two separate banks of drawers, one on the left and one on the right. As you can see here, I'm installing the runners to the center divider as well to ensure that it stays in the proper position and remains rigid. All right, now that my cabinet carcass is complete, I'm gonna install some drawer slides. I'm gonna do it up here on the bench um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'd rather stand up and work and sit on the concrete slab. Number two, I have a dog that likes to chew on wood. So I'm gonna do it up here. I'm gonna have a bank of four drawers on each side. So I'm gonna install a total of uh, eight sets of drawer slides. So let's get to work. To install the drawer slides, I mark the locations of where each one will be and then I use a square to mark some lines so that I know where to align my drawer slide hardware. To install the drawer slide hardware, I'm using this Craig drawer slide jig. I clamp it onto the cabinet carcass, make some punch holes with a nail punch, a spring-loaded nail punch that I have, and then install the drawer slide. There are many different methods to install drawer slides, but this seems to be the easiest for me. All right, so I now have half of all my drawer slides installed, meaning the part that goes on the carcass. I still need to install the part that goes on the drawer box. What I'm gonna do now is start making the drawer boxes. The drawer box's total width this way needs to be one inch less than this total width from carcass to carcass. I'm, not, I'm gonna ignore the drawer slides as far as my measurements go. I just know that it needs to be one inch less than this total width. Um, I'm not gonna go into detail about how to make a drawer box. There's a million ways to do it. You can find it online elsewhere. Um, but I'm gonna make eight drawer boxes and I'm gonna start that now. 
You could make drawer boxes with half inch plywood with a quarter inch bottom or whatever you desire, but I decided to use a three quarter inch material for all pieces of the box. As far as the drawer box assembly, this is probably the least preferred method, but I decided to simply use butt joints with no glue and some wood screws through the end. It's probably the ugliest method, but it's all right as it's shop furniture. To install the drawer slide piece to the drawer box, I note the location of the drawer slide and draw a line down the center. I then lay the drawer slide on and mark holes of where each screw will be. To mark the holes, I use this nail punch. This is my spring-loaded nail punch. I view the line that I drew through the drawer slide and mark these holes. After the holes are marked, I take my drill and screw in some screws. And naturally, I repeat this process about 14 million more times as I need a drawer slide on both sides of each of my 10 drawers. I then install the drawers onto the cabinet carcass just to make sure that I have a good fit and that the drawer slides properly. As you can see here, it does take a little persuasion to get it to go in the initial time. But after it's in, it opens and closes freely. Next, I find the center point of my drawer front. I then use this cabinet hardware installation jig from True Position Tools, which I will link below, to drill the holes for my cabinet hardware spacing. I'm using a 3-inch spacing on my cabinet handles. So I set the hardware as needed, and then I go ahead and drill the position, of, drill the holes for the position of my cabinet handles. By pre-drilling the holes for the cabinet handles, I'm able to use those holes to temporarily affix the drawer front to my drawer box. Here I'm placing some 1 8 inch plywood under the drawer front to use as spacers, and then screwing the drawer front to the drawer box using those holes that I drilled. Since that temporarily holds it in place, I can now open the drawer and permanently drill holes and screws for the drawer front to affix it to the drawer box. I repeat this process again multiple times for each drawer front. After all drawer fronts are installed, I use my cabinet hardware installation jig again to drill the holes for all of my cabinet handles needed on each individual drawer front. After the holes are drilled, I install the handles. Next, I begin disassembling and removing my existing bench. I remove the T-Track first, all the stuff underneath, undo the screws underneath to remove the top, and then remove the frame itself. I then wiggle over my new cabinet into place and drill the bottom back stretcher into the bottom plate of the wall. I also drill the top stretcher in place to the wall. I had to put a spacer of plywood behind there as I have some baseboard on the bottom of the wall that keeps the cabinet pushed out about three quarters of an inch away from the wall. Next, I install some shims under the cabinet to ensure that it is perfectly level both side to side and front to back. I made these shims out of southern yellow pine that I cut down on my bandsaw and my dog ranger, as seen here, is able to help me with that. Next I install one layer of 3 quarter inch plywood onto the top of the cabinet carcass. This will not be the work surface, so I don't mind drilling through the top, as you will not see the screw heads once I'm done. Next, I measure the final dimension of my top, both side to side and front to back, and use 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood to cross cut my tabletop down to dimension using my cordless circular saw. I make sure that the top will fit and then screw in from underneath through the existing 3 quarter inch plywood into my new tabletop work surface 3 quarter inch plywood. This will hold it in place, but provide a way to attach it without seeing screw heads. Now I begin installing all of the drawers into place, ensuring that they slide freely again. 
Next, I put my miter saw back into place, checking to make sure everything is in line with the other side T-Track, and also note the position of where my new T-Track will be installed. After my new T-Track is in place, I trace the position onto the work surface. Here I'm using a plunge router to router out a groove in my work surface where the T-Track will be installed. Once my T-Track fits fine, I use the screws that came with the T-Track to install it into the work surface table top. All right, well there you have it. A brand new addition to my miter saw station. Now I just need to fill up all the drawers uh, with tools and whatever I'm gonna store in there. Some of the drawers are a little bit hard to open and close. I'll probably go back in and just adjust those a little bit. Um, most of them are easy, but there's I think two that are hard. So it's complete. I'll probably spray some lacquer on here, just something to seal it a little bit. I might even go back and add some edge banding on these top pieces of plywood. And I might replace them drawer fronts just from uh, doggy damage. I have a little puppy that likes to chew on wood. If you enjoyed this video, uh, I encourage you to like and subscribe to the channel. Also leave a comment down below of what you think about this. If you think I did a good job or a bad job or indifferent. I'm Nick Harrison with Rocky River Woodworks. You can find this article and more on my website at www.rockyriverwoodworks.com. Also be sure to follow me on social media at Rocky River WW. Thank you for watching. Hey, if you enjoyed that video with this miter saw station, be sure to click up here where I have another video queued up for you that you can watch.